Hi. Okay. Hello. Hey, Hello. Judy. How are you? Nice to see you. How are you doing? Good. good. I, I am wonderful. Good to talk to you. Good to see you. Thanks for being with us. All right. So this, this uh, news that's breaking uh, from Reuters that uh, apparently uh, the U.S. is willing to release uh, Jonathan Pollard, um, I guess uh, the way it's described in the uh, article or the story is that uh, it, it, Israel will go ahead with its prisoner release, its fourth such prisoner release of Palestinian prisoners to the tune of 104, and the talks with the Palestinians will extend beyond the April 29th deadline. Well, that's, um, that's interesting, if true, as we say. I'm going to wait to see it because, as you know, Stephen, uh, I just heard you say that you think spying is spying and it's treasonous, and that doesn't matter who does it. And I'm kind of in your camp on that. Um, but I think that uh, it may be the, you know, just the incentive that the Israelis finally needed to go ahead and take a step that the Obama administration feels is essential to keeping these talks on track. By the way, Steve, let's just step back for a minute. These talks are really, really, really important to the Saudis, uh, which is one of the things we were going to talk about <laughs> today. Um, and I'm sure that uh, the status of those talks was uh, definitely discussed by King Abdullah and President Obama when they met. Yeah, well, obviously. But what do you mean by, uh, uh, you know, get the Israelis to make uh, take the step they need to take? I mean, the Saudis and the entire Arab League uh, just uh, just voted never to recognize Israel as a Jewish state. Comes on the heels of the Palestinian spokesman named John Kerry uh, saying that basically they don't have to. Well, uh, first of all, the Saudis a long time ago, more than you know, more than 15 years ago, proposed a plan that did call for recognizing Israel. And the Saudis want this settled. And the reason they want the Israeli-Palestinian quarrel settled is that their eternal enemy is Iran. And they want the United States to kind of stop being distracted by this little quarrel and concentrate on Iran. So when the Saudis and the Americans issue a statement saying the talks were very nice and the Americans say, well, there were tactical differences, but strategically we're on the same page, don't you believe it? We are not on the same page. The Saudis want us to do much more about the Iranians than this, this president is prepared to do. But one no, thing I is agree, prepared to but, do is uh, to I leave don't... on Israel to release prisoners so that the talks can keep going. <laughs> that he's willing to do. <laughs> yeah, well, that's unfortunate. I mean, <laughs> the Saudis have seen Barack Obama in action on Iran. Uh, I, of course, I would assume you would agree you could walk and chew gum at the same time, even this president. It doesn't matter that there's peace talks going on uh, with, uh, with Israel and the Palestinians, uh, quote unquote, because... You see what the policy towards Iran is. Call up the leader, beg to, be, beg to meet, beg to shake his hand, beg to have an agreement. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, I, how's that going to change if there's a supposed agreement between the Palestinians and the Israelis? Well, I think you raise two very important and separate issues here. One is the president's um, tactical positions vis-a-vis -vis all of these crises that he's been facing. But the second, and I think this is the more troublesome and, and problematic uh, uh, a challenge for him and for the United States is because of his tactical steps, his tactical drawing of red lines that he has is in no position and doesn't want to honor, his stepping back from previous threats that he's made. Uh, a lot of the world, and including the Russians, I don't think take us seriously, and they don't take our threats seriously. And now when he wants to uh, be taken seriously. Uh, he's having a hard time uh, getting his his meaning across because threatening. I mean, what he said. If you just look at what he said, the, the president said last last week about Ukraine. He said, "Well, you know, they're not a NATO member, and uh, we only use force when it comes to NATO members." And you right, know. so Putin went and looked up every country that's not a NATO member <laughs> and started readying his strategy. You know, this is not what you say if you want to get the Russians' attention. And I, I think, you know, the Saudis have the same uh, problem that everyone has, which is except the Israelis, because they know that, that with them, uh, Barack Obama is willing to apply pressure. <laughs> but with the Saudis, the Russians, right. people say, you know, look... 
our allies say, will he be there for us? And it's a big question, and it's raising all kinds of problems for them internally. And Judy, I, sorry, I, so, I, seriously. So, Judy, sorry so short with the technical problems we had at the beginning, but thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you again thank soon. You. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Right, Judy Miller, uh, always love her bye. insight. Um, we don't always agree, but I think to an extent, uh, we we uh, we agree on uh, on what's going on with Obama in the Middle East and and the whole world really. When we come back, it's give me five. You're not going to want to miss it on the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax Television. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show.